you know, sometimes I understand there's bad takes and there's good there's good takes too, especially the one uh, journalist that did a fantastic article on Marty O'Donnell and and I I gotta appreciate the dude for gathering all this data and stuff or the tweets and all that kind of stuff and managing to put the video together just so we can make that video and thanks to that guy that video just went bing 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 bing, bing right up in the YouTube algorithm so if that dude watches my videos or whatever thank you very much you did a fantastic job but there are some journalists that do not get it sometimes you don't go over the line sometimes you just do go over the line and this guy for sure did go over the line now if you don't know what i'm talking about this is glenn shelford or something like that i can't say his last name right last night he's the co-founder of making world uh call of duty world war ii like the remake or whatever it was or uh, yeah the, the the recent one not the old one and he is the creator and directive lead of the Dead Space series. You heard that right. Freaking Dead Space, man. Now, if you're wondering why I'm getting all a little flustered about this, this video, well, this article in general, which I should be saying, is because this whole article, which I'm going to read to you, is devaluing this developer that has been proven himself for the years that he cares about video games that he actually puts in the work and he's just not going to copy and paste these games over and over again to prove what you guys what i'm talking about too i'm actually going to take some clips out of the ars technica uh dead space video they had with this same developer about how he was explaining how what he went through how he developed dead space and how he managed to ship the game three weeks earlier than it was anticipated to go with almost zero bugs on this game and so many other things that went right with this game that the techniques that he learned from that he started to apply to other games so let's go ahead and just get into this article you guys will see where i'm kind of getting a little like jumpy and stuff and just getting overall annoyed with this article okay so what this basically this article is saying is call of duty dev visiting europe shooting old guns was hard work you know a profile on the latest issue of edge magazine saw former sledgehammer games executive glenn sheffield and he was the what was it the head director or yeah i think the head director of the old dead space game the very first one tell the vulnerable uk politicians that fans don't fully appreciate what it takes for a studio to get a Call of Duty game out the door. People nowadays think a Call of Duty game is, you know, just put it together through the grinder and another one will come out, Shadowfield said. They don't realize how much work goes into making a Call of Duty game. There's just a ton of research. What kind of research? He clarified. You're working with experts. I studied World War II for three years. I work with historians. I spent eight days in a van in Europe going to all the places that were going to be in the game. I shot different I shot different old weapons, all these things that you have to do when you're working on a Call of Duty game. Shadfield also messed in working with alongside special forces from several several well yeah, several different countries while acting as a co-director on two Call of Duty games, Advanced Warfare and World War II and support an Infinity Ward on a third Modern Warfare 3 <coughs> excuse me during his tenure at yeah tenure at Sledgehammer that honestly doesn't seem like a bad of a deal as far as video game development goes when the topic of work, hard work came up I fully expected him to give a nod to quality assurance or speak of speak on the grueling Call of Duty dev cycle not re-reading and watching videos as he grow, goes on to explain. Well, no way I tend to diminish the often overwhelming amount of work that goes into making video games, the majority of which falls to the grunts rather than the leadership. What Seinfeld is talking about here sounds suspiciously like a vacation. Sure, it's probably hard to think of it that way when you're there for work, but come on, you're traveling Europe with Activision's credit card in your wallet. 
Now back in the studio documenting bugs for 12 hours a day at barely more than minimum wage. <sighs> Whew. Whew. So that's pretty much of uh, the end of that whole thing right there. So uh, this one's going to get real nasty. So Ian, I got a quick question for you. If you even paid attention to this uh, developer, uh, Skullfield, if you even, uh, I, I watched the video again just to make sure I could pronounce his name right in any way. So if you guys, so I, Ian, if you actually watch this dude's, uh, how he develops games and stuff and understand, get into the developer's minds of how they develop these games, you would understand that dude was in line. I'm actually, actually from Ars Technica, I'm going to play a certain clip where he's going to admit a couple things and what he does to make these games. And I'm going to say this again, there's going to be a link to Ars Technica in the description and pinned comments, so please go watch that video. The insight to, to this man's mind of how he created Dead Space is absolutely phenomenal and I suggest you guys to watch it. So clip number one, let's roll it. We won a ton of awards on, on the sound design because the sound is so important in, in a video game to me. And a lot of games, sound design was like sort of the thing that came in last, wasn't that important. Oh, we ran out of memory, we don't have a lot. But right from the start, we said sound design and the music and the audio are key. One in particular that really got me was uh, the bar train room. Don Vecca was uh, telling me one day, he's like, Glenn, I was going in the bar train, we went under the bay, and it's the worst sound in the history of man, or something like that, and I'm like, record it. Next day, he's hanging out the bar train, getting the, the sound when it's in the tunnel and everything, and he plays it for me, and we have these really nice sound rooms. It was like screeching, and I'm like, oh man, it's great, you know? Because what we were looking for is how can we scare people just with sound? No monsters, no nothing. And in your article, Ian, you say he doesn't really care. He's it sounds like he's just going on a vacation. It just like through that whole article, it sounds like you're dismissing of what this developer had to go through, what he had to develop and everything. Glenn is one of these developers that actually do care about their games, developing their games. You see why people are mad with you, Ian? I don't think you understand. Let me play another clip where usually developers, directors, or creators don't admit where their influences come on. Come, and I'm gonna play one of those clips real quickly. And Paul, if you're watching this, you're right. You were absolutely right on this one because when he told me about this, it blew my mind that it actually came from the series where he got his influence. Play the clip. Some of my influences. Uh to make Dead Space from the game industry was definitely the, the Resident Evil series. And Resident Evil 4 had just come out. One of the things I would say to the team is uh, we're gonna make Resident Evil in space. And you got it right away. Let me sling a couple more, a little more dirt into your face too, Ian, since you wanna kind of like be passive aggressive and stuff, saying like, you know, he just took a vacation and he wanted to be lazy and stuff. There is one there is one part of dead space where you're going through the ship and there's a tentacle coming out grabbing you by the leg slamming you on the ground dragging you through all the corridor the, through the corridor and stuff and you're trying to shoot the damn thing and get away from it. Let me let me play the video real quickly. I like a little snippet of it of how he doesn't blame the team, he blames himself. Play the clip. But they're like, Glenn, we did everything you asked, but it's a mess. And I'm looking at it going, yeah, it is. You know, it is. After just kind of making a whole bunch of mistakes for a couple of weeks, we realized there's got to be a better way. And I realized that, you know, the problem wasn't the team. It was really on how I was giving them their assignment. Some things need to come first. I need to have them grab them by the leg before I can throw them on the ground. And he needs to be on the ground before I can start animating. So all these things then started coming in as a layer. Huh. Imagine that. Imagine a director coming out basically saying that it's his fault, that he needs to get his team together, started rearranging them, started getting them together, and start making... 
start making some real progress and come as in layers. And I do suggest my viewers to please go watch this Ars Technica video of Dead Space, of the creator and stuff. It is a fantastic video. I'm not going to lie to you guys. You guys are going to get a real kick out of it. Back to you, Ian. I really want to ask you something, dude. It, was it really was it really worth to put a fucking rage baity article out just to make people mad and stuff? I'm pretty sure you're gonna get a lot more traction with this uh, with this video, but I don't care. Speaking of gaining traction too, there is actually a <laughs> an IGN editorial communication guy, I believe. I can't remember, but he's like he's pretty up head honcho up in the. Uh, <laughs> in the IGN space with journalism named Mark Medina okay this is IGN part of the company that IGN is where they screwed up and <laughs> where they gave Pokemon Emerald a 4 out of 10 because too much water in the game okay so I'm gonna so I'm I'm gonna get back on topic I swear guys I just wanted to make that joke so Mark Medina IGN head director or writer or whatever he says, sorry, but f this. I spent four days with Gwen and Michael Condre leading up to the release of COD World War II, and to say they don't work hard because it doesn't fit your definition? Come on now, why, why are we writing hate articles like this? This is the new direction Kotaku was going for? You know what the sad part, Ian? You know what the real sad part is? You could have been a really good journalist. I could have been writing off one of your articles and patting you on the buck saying you did a good job. Or hey, maybe you had a bad take or stuff. But this whole article, which I'm not going to read, was just nothing but an attempt to just discredit Glenn Schofield and just saying that, oh, he's just lazy. He was using Activision's card and stuff just to get a free ride and stuff. Trust me. I've watched Glenn closely, Schofield for years. That many, that man is anything but lazy. He is like literally up there with Marty O'Donnell. Marty, like literally up there with Marty O'Donnell. And I have nothing respect for these developers. And honestly, all the hate that you're getting, dude, right now, it's justified. So please enjoy your rage bait article, because that's all you're ever going to be.